and, and let me get right down to it. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to hear this message. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur, you need this message. If you've been a seasoned veteran, uh, entrepreneur, military veteran, um, uh, transitioning from employee to entrepreneur, going from part-time to full-time, you need to hear this message. And I'm glad you're on it right now. But it's really a subject matter of one word. You guys want to know what it is? It's one word. It's one word. It's one word that you need to have in your business because it can make you a lot of money. You know, regardless if you're in sports or regardless if you're in business, regardless if you're in your faith, your, your, your place of worship, your community service, boom, this one aspect needs to be weaved into everything that you do. You know what? You know what it is? Here we go. One, two, three. It is discipline. It is discipline. Uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines discipline as controlled gain by enforcing obedience or order, orderly prescribed conduct or pattern of behavior. Third definition is self-control. Number four is punishment. You know, discipline like you give your, your children or uh, sometimes yourself if you don't uh, reach certain goals. Uh, number five, training that corrects, molds, or perfects the mental faculties or moral character. Or six, a rule or system of rules governing conduct conduct or activity. So, you know, w- one of the things that I see all the time in in social media is this whole do you, man. You know, you know, you just need to do you. You got 18-year-olds saying, I got to do me. 15-year-olds saying, I got to do me. I got 35-year-olds saying, I got to do me. Listen, I believe in doing you with the understanding and assumption that if doing you is based on a, an immoral uh, a fundamental and is based on a set of skills or more importantly, principles, and one of the main principles I'm talking about is discipline. Because sometimes as entrepreneurs, a lot of times people get involved in entrepreneurship because they say, you know what, I want to do me. I'm going to fire my boss. I'm going to do me. Great. But were you disciplined in how to replace your full-time income on a part-time basis? Were you disciplined in doing what you needed to do to grow your, your business, business development? Were you good, were you good on the phone? Uh, were, were you good following up? Were you good uh, in understanding how to close the sale? Were you good in making sure the client is serviced? If not, then why are you doing you too soon? I mean, oftentimes people fall flat on their face, and instead of taking ownership of the situation of them falling flat on their face, lack of discipline says, I'm pointing the fingers at everybody else. It's everybody else's fault. It breeds a toxic behavior. It breeds an element saying, so you know what? I'm going to blame everybody. I feel like I'm helpless. I feel like I'm justifying my lack of performance. I'm justifying my lack of success in business. And that right there is because you have a lack of discipline. It's not because you have a lack of performance. It's because you have a lack of discipline. Let me explain. Usually when discipline is lacking in oneself, and by the way, I'm talking to myself. Just because I came out of the Marine Corps, listen, myself and a lot of Marines have a hard time transferring discipline from the military into the civilian life. Lots of times people have a, Lack of discipline when translating their work ethic from their job, their job as a a firefighter, a teacher, uh, uh, um, an engineer, a lawyer, uh, uh, um, a consultant. They have difficulty in translating that same discipline working for a boss versus working for themselves. Why? I mean, they did it for somebody else. How come they can't do it for themselves? Why? Because the lack of self-discipline, entrepreneurs need this aspect the most. Why? Because you end up working for the worst boss to ever have, which is who? Yourself. At the beginning, you are the worst boss to work for yourself. I remember me lacking discipline, investing in my business, such as investing in my office space, investing at least in a cubicle. I attempted to run this business out of my one-bedroom apartment for too long, leveraging Panera Bread, Starbucks, uh, Denny's, IHOP. I used to call IHOP, I hope because I hope to close a deal over Rudy Tooty, fresh and fruity. <laughs> and because I lack discipline in reinvesting back into my business, I started living off my business too soon. I started living in my business instead of creating profit and capital, reinvesting that profit back into capital into my business. My business was stagnant when I initially started my career. And I, I, was, I, was, I was working out of a Starbucks very lazily too, you know, for too long. And here's why. The insurance industry, The insurance industry typically pays you a lot of money in a short period of time based on commissions. And we got guys, you know, you close one sale. Our guys are here. You know, uh, uh, I I have uh, have my my report from last month, but uh, we paid our guys over $370,000 in cash flow and commissions last month. 
Just in the last week, we paid him over $116,000 in commissions the last week. Uh, I got guys making $25,000 a month. I got guys making $15,000 a month, $9,000 a month, $8,000 a month, so on and so forth. I got part-time people uh, making one to $3,000 a month. Guys, this is, this, is, this is three pages of reports of people making money that would be part-time and full-time well over the amount of money they would normally make at a full-time job. And they fall into what I call the great seduction if they lack discipline. What is the great seduction? You make a lot of money in a short period of time, and you say you're working. When I'm actually thinking about, you used to bust your tail at your boss 40, 50, 60 hours a week. But rarely do you, as an entrepreneur, now making more money than you are uh, uh, at your full-time job, now as an entrepreneur, you're not spending the same amount of time at your business working for yourself than you did at your boss. Why is that? What's going on, Dean? Hey, Dean Mason, what's going on, bro? Speaking of a guy that's disciplined, he's been in the DJ game. Let's cue up our song, man, from DJ Dean Mason. Okay. That was your that was your 10-second music break. Dean Mason, what's going on, brother? I'm glad you're on. But listen, I got like, for example, Dean Mason, DJ, disciplined, making music, disciplined. Work in his business, discipline. It doesn't matter if you're insurance agent, DJ, firefighter. If you have this element of discipline, especially working for yourself, you're going to make a lot of money. And you don't fall into the great seduction, which is making a lot of money in a short period of time and saying that you're working in relation to what you used to do for a boss. Some, you know, I, I got a guy who's making $10,000, $15,000 a month, and sometimes they're working 30-hour work weeks. How do I know that? Because we touch base once a week. I'm like, dude, what's going on with your week? You know, and by the way, I think guys that are making ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a week, or excuse me, a month, uh, feel bad because their potential is so much greater than what they're actually showing. And one thing that I can't stand is somebody not fully living their potential and putting it on the paper. That's just an element that I have. That I want to surround myself, my company, my firm, my associations. That if I'm coaching somebody, they want to express their full potential by implementing discipline. Right. And, and what will keep you from discipline is two things, which was ego and pride. Ego and pride will keep you from being disciplined, especially if you don't like being corrected, especially in your job. Uh, for example, sometimes sometimes the people that's hardest to coach are the people that's been at their job for five, 10, 15, 20 years. They've gotten to a certain level of esteem and certain level of respect with inside the context and the ecosystem of the job. And when they come and do uh, something new, like, for example, with us, they don't like hearing correction because they've never been corrected at their, at their job before. They're the ones doing the correcting. They're not the ones being corrected. But listen, my man, you're coming into my world. You're coming into the world of entrepreneurship. You're coming into the world of becoming financially free, which your current job isn't allowing you to do. So listen, can you put your ego and pride to the side for a minute and learn something new? Am I rolling here, bro? <laughs> but as much as they talk about leadership what they don't like talking about is a topic of followership like i want to be a good leader if i want to be a good leader entrepreneur i gotta learn how to follow first if i want to be a master at my craft i have to be an apprentice first sometimes this whole do me mo movement removes people from going through the process of going through ups and downs with somebody right next to you i mean there's like very little or, or at all apprentices for entrepreneurs, not in our office, not in our context of PHP agency. That's what we offer. That's our value proposition for people that we recruit. For the most part, people that don't have that value proposition, and they're leaving their law firm to be their own attorney. They're leaving their engineering firm to be their own consultant. They're, they're leaving a, a real estate brokerage too soon. They try to be their own broker themselves. And they end up being just being broker because running a brokerage is different than selling real estate or selling financial products and services just by yourself. Why? Because you took your broker for granted. You took your boss for granted. You took the environment they were in for granted. Top pe people said, man, I, I want to get up and train. I want to be a teacher. Well, great. How good were you as a student? I, learned, I had to learn how to be a good student. And so when, when we're looking at how does discipline show up, I was at the gym the other day, and I was having a conversation with one of the guys. That's, uh, it's summertime. A lot of guys are competing for physique contests, a bodybuilding contest. Obviously, I'm not. But they were, and uh, my asshole. How, how do you guys? How do you guys see each other on stage? We see, and he says, "We see you on stage 
we see you on stage and we see how much of lacking discipline you had based on your diet and your workout routine because the light exposes everything. When you're on stage and the bright lights come in, they see, okay, he was, he was cheating on his diet a little bit. He wasn't in a set. Uh, he, he took off Saturdays and Sundays. He took off Friday nights too much. He was partying too much. Why? Because bodybuilders have a difficult time surrounding themselves with people that will push them to the next level. That's why they got to go to certain gyms because they're so, they have to be so different, uh, disciplined to create their meal prep. And they can see who didn't meal prep. They can see who cheated on, on, on their workouts on a bodybuilding competition. Marines. We see in uh, we see through drills guys that were taking it easy in drills because when the bullets start start flying, they're the ones that start crying. The more you sweat, the more you sweat in peacetime, the less you bleed in combat. That's a saying in the Marine Corps. College coaches, what are college coaches constantly doing? They get the most from the players, utilizing the system that they're in. Then then it's there's a discipline recruiting that next wave of players to play for that college to build the program and to rebuild the program to win championships. I got a lot of respect for the disciplines of college coaches. So here, here's some points, guys. In the context of aspiring entrepreneurs getting to the next level, in, especially right now in summertime, especially right now in summertime, guys, listen, I want to share with you something. I'm not, I'm not talking about what, what I conceptually think is right, but I'm sharing with you what we've done. I'm going to share with you what my wife and I have earned the last 20, uh, uh, 26 days, not even a full 30 days yet, We'll share with you what we earned the last 26 days of nine of them being gone in Greece because we applied discipline earlier in the year because we're anticipating being in a company trip to Greece, to Italy for nine days. And we didn't want our business to fall short while we were gone. Okay, I'm going I'm to share with you the check. So what do we do? We, we were talking about it. We planned for it. We anticipated. We challenged our guys to perform that, hey, guys, you're not going to be the type of person that needs a boss. We're coaching entrepreneurs. So, hey, step up your game, especially while we're gone. Yeah, of course, we're going to reward you. But this is what we earned in tw 26 days. Here it is. No, notice notice the day, uh, the 14th. That's uh, that's 26 days, right? Am I, is my math wrong? So, uh, yeah, so 26, 27 days. Not even a full 30 days yet. So January 14th to 7-11, that was yesterday, okay? This is, this is what we, this is, this is direct deposits to our, to our checking account. There it is. All because we chose to be disciplined. I, I chose to live a life that I'm not apologizing. That's just not limited to me. You can do that. All of you can do that. And, and here's the problem. Here's the problem. I'm, I'm gonna share with you why most people don't make that type of money. Not, not just in 26 days. I mean, imagine if you can do that in a year. A lot of people, that would solve a lot of people's financial problems because they should do that in a year. So don't worry about my, you know, me just you say, well, oh, $125,000, which, by the way, is a lack of discipline. If you check out mentally, oh, only Matt's doing that because so-and-so and so, and you just, you guys realize that my wife and I, we started at the bottom, right? You know, by the way, I've been working as an entrepreneur, working in this craft for 19 years, 14 years as an independent sales rep, agent, licensed. My wife's not licensed, not me. But she's like, she does all the sales now. But we just did this. Yeah, Renee raised it. What's a happening? What's a happening with your discipline, baby? So let's talk about it. Number one, you got to be aligned. If you want to incorporate more discipline to your life, you got to be aligned with something greater than yourself. Are you aligned with something that's congruent to the direction that you want to go that's of service and benefit to others? I hope so. Or is it just a self-centered, self selfish thing? Now, will, will guys make a lot of will guys make like this type of, type of money? Of course they will. But you know what? If you want lasting wealth, you want lasting income, not just a flash in a pan. You ever see guys that make a lot of money and then something changes? The next thing you know, they're doing something else. Lack of discipline. You see some guys uh, they attempt to do something, they put it on social media, and then it doesn't work, and people hit them in the mouth too much, and the trolls hit them back, and they don't stick with it. Lack of discipline, and then they they troll everybody else and blame everybody else. Why? Because they lack discipline. By the way, lack of discipline shows up in other aspects of their life. Look at their personal life. Look at their family life. I'm not asking you to judge them. I'm asking you to evaluate them. Are they living a life that you want to live? Or are they taking care of their body? Are they taking care of their relationships? Are they taking care of the kids, the people that know uh, 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 closest to them, their parents? I, I, when I, when I uh, started uh, dating Sheena, who's now my wife, I looked at the relationship she had with her family. I intentionally look at the 
the, the discipline she had in her life, college athlete, disciplined single mom, making six figures, making no excuses. Wow, that's discipline. She's aligned to something greater than herself, which is her family, her son, her parents, her faith. When you're looking at discipline and looking for alignment, am I adding to the table or am I just taking from it? That would be an example of alignment. Number two is coachability. Uh, Brandon was here. There's a guy that called me up. He says, man, I've been listening and watching to your videos. I love your stuff. Da, 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 da. And, and uh, we're in the middle of a, a – we're getting the BOM started. Yeah. And the entire time, he was just talking, 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 talking. And I can barely get a word in. And I can tell he needed help. He says, I need a coach. I need, I need somebody to help me. Awesome. Let me help you out. But he was the one doing all the talking. When you want to say, I want discipline in my life, are you coachable? Do I listen more than I'm speaking? Am I seeking to understand, then be understood? Because sometimes people say, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. I hear an excuse coming. Before I start talking, uh, I want you to know something. The context where I'm going, okay, I get it. But can you talk about that in 10 seconds versus 10 minutes? Give me context real quick, but don't take 10 minutes to do it. Otherwise, I just hear a bunch of excuses and justifications why you haven't won because of your lack of discipline. Bottom line, in terms of coachability, ask yourself, can I get past me? Can I get better? Can I push my limits? If you're asking yourself those questions, you're willing to be disciplined and take it to the next level. Number three, daily activities. Daily activities. What are my daily activities looking like? If I'm an entrepreneur, what are my daily activities looking like? Listen, um, there, there's a there's a um, Edward Jones across the street from our office. You know what he has to do every day? He has to pass up 50 business cards a day, and he has to log it in. If he doesn't log it in for a consistent period of time, he gets fired. Somebody takes over his book of business. He gets fired. He gets canned. It takes over his one, two, three years worth of, of work and gives it to somebody else. Boom. Done. So are, are your daily activities, for example, you got to focus on what makes you the most amount of money as an entrepreneur every day. Sometimes people work in the business versus working on the business. They're dealing with things that an assistant can do versus things that only you can do. Like you need to stay in your power spot. You need to stay in your greatness. You need to stay in a spot that brings your company the most amount of value. And for some of you guys starting this and lifting this up, you're looking for personnel. You're looking for talent. You're obviously looking for clients. That's what you need to stay disciplined and focused on on a daily basis. Well, man, I really need to know the products. Listen, now, once you get to know one product, you get to know all the product. What's the difference between uh, like, a doc, like a Dr. Pepper or a Coca, Coca-Cola? I mean, aren't they all the same? Perrier water, sparkling water, flat water, generally all the same products. You know, in the insurance industry, what's the difference in one insurance policy and another insurance policy? And by the way, I have a, I have a listen, watch this. I got, a, I got a stack of insurance policies. By the way, these are my life insurance policies. These are my life insurance policies, all right? There, there's many different uh, uh, companies here. These are my life insurance policies for me. I have multiple life insurance policies to the point where I got my, my estate plan portfolio and trust all and will uh, directors, powers, attorneys, uh, resuscitate or do not resusc resuscitate all right here because I want to make sure every day what I'm working towards that I'm financially disciplined to make sure my family receives the most and the government receives nothing or the least. That's what I want to do with finances. Right? So what I needed to do, I needed to understand and study the money game. And sometimes people say, "Well, oh, man, I, I want to, I want to get, I want to get rich. I want to get rich. Have you studied the rules of the money game? No. Do you understand why the rich get richer? No. Great book for you guys to read: How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling, written by a guy named Frank Becker, disciplined guy, translated his discipline from professional baseball into selling life insurance. Uh, and, and by the way, you, you know who uh, tipped me off on this book? It was an Amway guy. About twenty years ago, he tipped me off to this book. And he talks about his daily disciplines and what he does on a daily basis. So daily disciplines, what are your daily activities to help you get results, to help you drive revenue? You know, I, I love when I see guys on Shark Tank, they're pitching their product, they're pitching their, their deal to the sharks, and the sharks give them a skeptical look. And, and the sharks look at him, okay, you want, you want uh, you know, $50,000 for 10% uh, of your company, you got a, you know, you a, you know, a $500,000 valuation, you got a $5 million valuation, whatever. Great. If you think your company is worth that much, can I ask you a question? The entrepreneur says, yes. The shark says, how much of this have you sold? How much have you sold? Who's buying your product? If you think you're worth this much and you want my money to invest in you, and you think you're worth this much, how much have you sold? 
And they're like, bah, 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 bah. come on, man. You're asking for money to fund, a, to fund your lifestyle is really what they're getting at? You're, you're asking to fund your lifestyle? Come on, man. No daily discipline by the entrepreneur show what they call a proof of concept. Show that it works. Show that it can be sold. I'll invest in you. Fourth thing. How are you treating your business? Are you treating this business like a hobby? Because really, there's four ways to treat your business. You treat it like a hobby. And by the way, do people that have a hobby, do they make any money? People put together model airplanes and toy soldiers and, and, and some people's hobbies. And, you know, I stumbled across are sneakerheads because I've become a little bit of a sneakerhead myself. Um, but this hobby doesn't make me any money. I happen to be buying and collecting Air Jordans. It's been my thing. I wear Air Jordans. I've been collecting it. I, I was 42 years old, made uh, half a million dollars a year before I got my first pair of Air Jordans. How's that for discipline? By the way, here, here's my daily disciplines, right? I've got, I've got a, thir a, thir a $30,000 Rolex on this watch, okay? And on this wrist, which I favor the most, it's, it's called the, the power of broke. You guys see that? Power of broke. One wrist, power of broke. This wrist, thirty thousand dollar Rolex watch. Why do you think I wear the power of broke? Because I don't want to. Fit, I want to forget how I treat the business when I was broke. I don't let money validate me. Matter of fact, the first pair of Air Jordans I just talked to you about, I didn't even buy them. It was given to me because I, I maintained a standard of a daily discipline, daily discipline for one and a half years. He got me a pair of Jordans. Patrick gave me a pair of Air Jordans. We were the first in our company to run a million dollar business. We call it a million dollar base shop, a million dollar agency. And instead of a, an award or a reward, he, he gave me a, uh, he gave me a, uh, not a award, he gave me a reward. I didn't buy this $30,000 Rolex. I can afford to buy it, but I didn't buy it because I decided to bust my tail, put myself in a context, put myself in a leadership organization, uh, buy mentors forward thinking, not thinking like running it like corporate governance but actually running a business like a business, like an entrepreneur, and he rewarded me. Why? Because I started trading my business not like a hobby, not like an independent contract with independent contractor salesperson, not like a business owner. I started trading my business like an athlete. You know what I'm talking about, an athlete? Like I want to treat my business like I used to treat my career in the Marine Corps, all out. First one here, last one to leave. Spit shine in my boots. Not, it wasn't good enough for me just to shine my boots. I wanted to spit shine my boots, and I wanted the best spit shine boots in the entire unit. I remember all my inspections. I remember during the week, while everybody was uh, goofing off and doing this. Yeah, Marines, they were goofing off and doing these things. I was goofing off too, but I was also spit shining my boots. I was goofing off also, but I was making sure my uniforms were pressed out. Everybody was goofing off, but I made sure my haircut was tight. Everybody was goofing off, but I made sure that I was proficient in my job as a machine gunner in the United States Marine Corps on an XM-250 caliber. A uh, uh, helicopter, a uh, CH 46 frog. I want to make sure all the infrastructure and the systems I was familiar with because I want to treat my business like a sport. Because when the bullets start flying, heroes become heroes. And those that didn't take their business seriously, they didn't take their career seriously, they start crying and they end up in a fetal position. So, what do you want to do when the financial wolf, big bad wolf, wants to come knock on your door? The financial big bad wolf come knocking on your door. He huffs and he puffs. Can he blow your financial house down? I hope not, because I had. I hope you have expressed financial discipline to build your financial house with bricks. Financial discipline and discipline in your finances allows you to lay a financial foundation down. Because when the, when the everything else, when this recession hits and the financial things that put people put, put their money into crumbles for that year or for that quarter to be rebuilt back up again, it's all based on what a financial fundamental foundation, which is expressed by financial discipline. Last, last example here of discipline is your own personal example. You know, uh, uh, Victor Landor mentioned in a full-timers renters meeting this morning, because uh, I think uh, 19 renters at rent office space, we have a renters meeting this morning to hold each other mutually accountable to the, op the financial operations of our office. And, and we built that discipline when we had two offices to rent out. Now we have 14 offices to rent out in cubicles to rent out before we had zero, because what you do with the small, right, you'll be trusted with the great. And our own personal example says, how, we, how are we a steward of the money that we're collecting on a monthly basis and how are we using it? It's a personal example to, to make sure that we're stewarding over the finances we've been entrusted with 
to manage. Like we've entrusted, like we're a steward of this opportunity. We're a steward of the benefits of expressing ourselves as entrepreneurs to run a business. Like I feel very fortunate to call myself an entrepreneur because I know how easily it is for things to be taken away. Discipline just doesn't show up when things are going great. It shows up when you're feeling the lowest. This one shows up when you're not engaged, feeling right. When you're not getting recognition, that's when discipline shows up. Or that's when lack of discipline doesn't show up because of what you do, because you don't respond. And so when when I'm thinking about, lastly, as, as 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 I sign off here, I'm thinking about my wife and us finding out that she's pregnant. I think that trip in Greece paid off. What do you think, Brandon? <laughs> I think we have a souvenir that's going to be delivered nine months from now. <laughs> Money smart baby. Uh, but my wife is pregnant. I'm going to share with this story. I remember as a single parent, um, I, I found out that I was expecting kids. I'll, I'll, I'll freely admit to you guys, I can't say at that time that, hey, guys, I can't say at that time that I was joyful. Matter of fact, I started crying. I, I t- I, by the way, I tell this to my twins today. They're 17 years old today. And I tell this to my twins. I found out that, they, that you were twins, not just one kid. It was a surprise that you were, you know, that, that, that you're, you're on your way. It was even more of a surprise that I found out it was twins. I started crying. I started crying. Not because I was joyful, but because I was really scared. Very few things in the Marine Corps that I faced that I was afraid of and that I was scared. Being a single father, realizing that you have a set of twins on the way and you're just trying to get your life together, I was crying. Anyway, thankfully for this industry, thankfully somebody put me under the wing, thankfully somebody taught me sales, thankfully somebody put me inside uh, a, a situation where I can be in the insurance industry where I have flexibility my time, flexibility my schedule, no quota, I can do this on my own, Thankfully, as a single parent, somebody introduced to me the insurance industry. And for 14 years, I was an independent agent selling life insurance. And and I was making a six-figure income because I chose to incorporate discipline. Now that I got my life together, now that I got discipline incorporated, that there's an order of things, there's a process of things. I got connected with my faith, got connected with uh, a a, a message. I mean, right now, guys, I, I got... You want, you, want, you want a book? This is the book to have. I, I got the John Maxwell Leadership Bible on my desk because it breaks down the Bible in, leadership, in a leadership context by John Maxwell. So, you know, right? so, so that's, why, that's why this word is still living with me and through me till this day because, that's all, because there's only so much New King James Old English language I can tolerate. But two weeks ago, when my wife pulls me to the side and she goes, look, and she has an early pregnancy test on the, on, on the counter of the bathroom. Uh, she tells me she's pregnant. I remember hugging my wife with joy. I remember hugging my wife with expectation. I remember hugging my wife as gentle as somebody handles a tea set, like fine china. I remember hugging her and saying, wow, we're going to build a family together. We have a child in the way. And the last thing on my mind, last thing on my mind was finances. Why? Because all the things I just talked to you about the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes is putting discipline in your life today. Because discipline or lack of discipline will show up 30 days from now. It'll show up six months from now. It'll show up a year from now. It'll show up 10 years from now. And if you're careful by not incorporating discipline, it's gonna show up in the next generation. And what do you wanna do? Do you wanna leave, ge- you leave your next generation with an inheritance? Or do you wanna leave your, the next generation with regret? It's your choice. It's your choice. I, I, I happen to read scripture. And, in Pro, and by the way, if you just read Proverbs, if you just read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, so many things I've been throwing at you today. If you read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, got no mention. I'm, gonna try, try, I'm not trying to shove Jesus down your throat. But if you want to just read, if you just want to read some Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, which is written by King Solomon which is written by the, the, the richest king who ever lived, which is King David's son. He took the, the Hebrews, he took the people of Israel to a golden age of prosperity, wealth, and happiness. Why? Because it's based on fundamentals, it's based on principles, and it's based on disciplines. And guess what happened? They became wealthy, they became prosperous, they became happy. 
So for those of you watching this, what do you want to do with your family, with your current situation, with your next generation? Do you want to finally put your, your family's feet on a path of financial success, joy, and happiness and fulfillment? Or is it going to be the same old, same old because you choose to incorporate discipline into changing your circumstance? I hope it's the first one. I hope it's the first one. And so with that being said, guys, you say, Matt, I want to really make some of these changes. I just don't know how. I really need to find a, a, a set of new friends. I just don't know where. Matt, I, I really need to find a blueprint to success. I, I just don't know where to create one and how to create one. Well, let me put something out for you. If you can invest in yourself, August 13th through the 16th, you come to our annual convention, and guess who's our guest speaker? Kevin Hart. Well, Matt, uh, I, 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 I'm broke. And then, listen, if alcoholics can be disciplined enough to find money for alcohol, if drug addicts can be disciplined enough to do whatever it takes to find money to fulfill their drug habits, what about you? How come you can't be disciplined and addicted to your success? Can you do that? I hope so. And guys, you, you come out here. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not paying your way. No, I'm not doing. You got to make an investment in you. Well, Matt, didn't you say you just made one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars? Can't you pay my? Yeah, I could. I could, but I won't. You know why? Because that's also a, a form of lacking discipline. Like you're expecting me to bail you out when at all with the, with the, the whole time the whole control is really with you. You have control, not me. Do you want to be dependent on me for the rest of your life? Or do you want to be dependent on you for the rest of your life and for the sake of your family's life? Because you don't value what you get for free. There's no discipline in that. You value what you pay for. You value what you paid a price for, which is a discipline of success. My suggestion is you attend our national convention. We'll put a link here in the comment section below for you guys can link and uh, click on the link. And by the way, don't just bring yourself, bring your wife. Why? Because, or your husband. Why? Because, or your family members. Why? Because you need to show them that you're investing in you, that you want to incorporate a new discipline in your life. Well, Matt, why do we got to come out to Vegas? Why do we got to come out to the Venetian? Why do we got to come to your event? Well, I know what our event does. Because here's the thing. Three years ago, six-figure income. 2015, $208,000 income. 2000. Uh, 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 17, uh, 16, okay, 2015, 208, 2016, 646. Why? Because of attending big events. My life continued to change. My, my brain goes more. By the way, we're, we're going to put another uh, um, uh, video here about three big reasons why she attend a big event. And last year, seven figures. There's been people that spend their whole entire life and never make seven figures, let alone, let alone six figures. But because of investing in myself, investing in here, guys, I don't have a four-year degree. I don't have a two-year degree. I had a 2.2 GPA, just enough for me to play sports in high school. Life-changing moments don't happen on your couch. Life-changing moments don't happen in your backyard. Life-changing moments don't happen with uh, a two o'clock in the morning uh, programs that you buy off infomercials and you never do it is just sitting on a DVD shelf. Why? Because we, we all, we all lack some form of discipline. And by surrounding ourselves and plugging ourselves into a community of people that want to take their disciplines to the next higher level, guess what naturally happens to your individual self-discipline? It increases. I watched the movie Lincoln last night. I mean, he had a discipline about himself, about how he led people. He didn't force you into the decision. He, co he coerced you pr through persuasion as his leadership style. Only one time did he say, I'm the president of the United States of America. I remember one line. He said, I'm the president of the United States of America, clothed in great power. But I'm going to coerce you into understanding our options as a country if you don't sign the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. The rest of the country, there's civil war. But he coerced America into signing. He didn't demand it. Wow. Anyway, any, I can go on and on and on about the word discipline. It's a favorite of mine. I hope you guys embrace discipline 
not just in one aspect of your life. Like this is a conversation I have with professional athletes, can't, a boxer, basketball player, football player. Can you translate that daily discipline of being an athlete, diet, working out, mental toughness, studying game tech? Can you translate that to business? Sadly, I find a lot of guys falling flat on their face because they get lazy. They lack to express disciplines. Same thing too with Marines. And I get on, the, I get on them the most. Please share this video from my desk to you, whatever address you uh, ask us to send us to. We want to give one of these two books to you. Matter of fact, I'll give them both away. Why not? I'll give them both away. We're gonna we're, we're gonna select we're gonna select some winners who share this the most, and we're gonna send you the cap. Uh, the, uh, how are, uh, I'm, I'm messing myself around. The capitalist code. It can save your life by Ben Stein, or how I raise myself from failure to success in selling. These books will help increase your discipline, discipline for you to read and to incorporate and increase and give you an uh, opportunity to position yourself for financial success. Thank you guys for investing in you. Thank you guys for sharing if you haven't done so already. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications so therefore you can be alerted the next time we upload our next episode or next upload our next uh, archive of a live stream that we did on Facebook. That being said, guys, appreciate you tuning in. I hope you incorporate a lot more discipline in your financial lives. We'll be a whole lot more better off uh, financially, as a country, as a community, and more importantly, as your home. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Till, till we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. <laughs>